It used to be there were two camps you could fall into with an inner outer belt system in competitive shooting. There was the flexible camp which promoted the best bond between the inner outer belt and was generally more comfortable, or the stiff belt camp which created hot spots on your hip bones. However, your gear absolutely would never flex or move as you shot. Now in 2021 with the DAA Lynx belt, why not get both? Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and this is the DAA Lynx Belt. Your initial response to the Lynx Belt likely reflects your imagination and your capability of understanding what was on offer. The inner and outer belt system hadn't really been updated in the last 20, maybe 30 years. So a lot of people scoffed at the Lynx Belt. It looks like it's plastic and all this kind of stuff, not seeing the potential that the belt probably had. And in the belt's own marketing materials, it says that it's more rigid, it's more comfortable, and it's it's portable. So we'll evaluate the belt along those three criteria, but let's start with some general information. First and foremost, you don't actually go and order a belt in the traditional sizing system. If you go to the website, it will ask you to measure your waist, you input your waist diameter, it will spit out how many links you need, and then you get to pick the links in whatever colors you want. I chose purple, black, and green to match my 2021 jersey, and it kind of does, which is kind of cool. When the belt shows up, it's going to come basically as a bag of links, and you're going to have to find some time where you can use a hammer and a punch to put the belt together. It took me just under 10 minutes when I installed one more link than I needed, had to knock it out and remount the belt buckle. So in the spirit of lumber, measure twice, cut once. So as you get close, just slip on the closure piece and see if the buckle is going to make the stretch for you and save yourself the time. And it is rather noisy banging the little roll pins that they use in, so make sure that you can do it when you're not going to bug your housemates. So you pick your links on the website. It is going to come with the DAA inner belt as well. So a complete belt system for somebody with a size 40 belt, which is pretty typical in USPSA, is going to be about $72, which is about $10 more than an inner outer belt system currently goes for. There are some extras that come with the belt. It gives you a bunch of extra roll pins. It gives you an extra one of these little rubber deals that lets the buckle kind of stretch out and then you'll be off to the races. As far as compatibility with other belt gear is concerned, I know that that is a concern for a lot of people. Having basically most of the belts that people compete with at this point, I was able to test most of the gear that's commonly used. I can tell you on good authority that the Guga Rebus gear will absolutely work on the belt. The Ghost gear will absolutely work on the belt. The Double Alpha stuff obviously works on the belt. Blade Tech Tech Lock absolutely works on the belt. What doesn't work on the belt is CR Speed. The way that CR Speed uses kind of that C-Bax thing, it would have to kind of slip onto the links as it is. And the links are just a little bit thicker than a traditional outer belt. So I've heard that you can get them to mount on there, but I'm too lazy to attempt it. I didn't want to damage my CR Speed gear because pretty good gear. Talking about mounting the double alpha pouches on the belt, uh, one thing you're going to want to do, especially on your front pouch, is make sure that you mount between the joints because if you don't, if you mount in the center of a link, then you can get a little bit of wiggle on the pouch. It's not a big deal on the pouches further back on your belt, but that front pouch you want to be as stiff as possible, so be sure to go ahead and mount it between two different links and it's not a problem. Now evaluating the belt along their claims, as far as stiffness is concerned, absolutely. This is far and away the stiffest belt that I have ever tried. There is zero roll in the belt. None of your equipment will move on this belt. It is significantly stiffer. I am not using hyperbole or exaggerating like this. This is the stiffest belt out there, which is unusual because traditionally like the old DAA premium belts, which are super stiff for an inner outer belt, like you kind of had to break them in, right? Uh, when you first put them on, they created kind of hot spots on your hip bones and then you didn't have kind of like the best bind to sort of your inner belt around the back and stuff like that. This doesn't have that problem at all. This thing is super flexible, so it moves when you move, which is kind of weird. So you get the comfort of a flexible belt, but the stiffness of a rigid belt. So it, it truly is the best of both worlds. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, you can roll the belt up on itself to a very small size. 
So if you're shooting a high cap division like open, which is the one true division that you should shoot, then your belt can be made very, very small and it goes inside your range bag. That sounds like a, well, who cares about that? Yeah, it's a feature that you don't realize you need until you have it. Then you're like, why did I ever do this another way? So I use a backpack style range bag. My belts go inside my backpack, cleans up a lot of trunk space as I'm going to and from the range. When I'm storing my range bag, my belt is inside the bag. When I fly to flyaway matches, my belt is inside my bag. It's just a better solution, and it's something that you'll appreciate once you have, but you can't really put a value on that until you've experienced it. So I think the Lynx belt is pretty significant. I had one of the early models of it. It was sent to me by Double Alpha for review. I've shot a couple matches at this point. I've done a bunch of live fire practice with it. The bind between the inner and outer belt is exceptional. It's better than a traditional belt, which is kind of cool. My only reservation about not like wholeheartedly endorsing it is like, yes, this thing is amazing, is like, I don't know how long the Velcro is gonna hold up. If it can make it more than a couple years, then this thing gets a big thumbs up from me and I'm honestly optimistic that it will make it just based on how the hooks seem to be designed. I can't see them wearing out in the kind of the same way that the other belts would. So if you're somebody who takes the sport seriously, you're putting your belt on every single day, going to the range a couple times a week, maybe you do flyaway matches, a couple matches a month, you need one of these, like you just do. To everybody else, it would be an upgrade to your existing belt, but you're not going to really achieve the benefit on the same way somebody who uses the belt all the time is going to experience. I imagine most gear makers on the go forward are going to make sure that their gear fits onto the DAA belt because I do think it's probably going to start to be a standard at least among the people who take the game very seriously and that's going to likely lead to a lot of people who are casual about the game wearing these as well. So if you want to check out the review on the Alpha X holster then you can follow the link here otherwise I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.